when we talk of astrology and predictions the most important thing is analysis of houses right there is no other way except for the analysis of houses in astrology right any question is in front of you whether you are looking at a prashna chart or a natal chart you have to first identify the question is related to which house and which planet and then you have to analyze the house and planet post analysis you will go and predict the result this will come true except for this if you do anything either it will not come true or the result will be partially correct only that's the truth which is very clear by experience since more than many many years right more than like 400 500 years now in this analysis part i want to share something with people with you people whenever we analyze a house there are you know some basic things many a times what you will find that the house is not actually having a planet right or a planet also you see that planet is also not having any any influence over it so what does it mean now this is a very difficult question for beginners what to do in this particular scenario the result the answer is very very simple in fact the topic that i am going to talk about right now is more important even if there are planets in the house this analysis you cannot ignore if you do so your analysis will be partial only right what i am trying to say i am trying to super emphasize the importance of particular houses classically speaking the fourth house 12th house 5th house and 9th house these two houses becomes very important right once again i will repeat 4th 5th 9th 12th these houses are very important you are analyzing any house does not matter if these houses from the planet or the house that you are analyzing if these houses are having malefics then the result is going to be bad you have to remember this if you ignore this principle it will not be correct for example taking the 7th house as a example 4th house from 7th house will be 10th house 12th house from 7th house will be 6th house 5th house and 9th house from 11th house will be 11th house and 3rd house respectively so now you should understand that if 10th 11th 3rd and 6th house are having malefics this is going to create problem in marriage and because these planets are going to create problem in marriage the problem will be felt in the dashantar dasha of these planets the problem will be because of whatever these planets signifies either as per their natural signification or the signification that they gain through house lordship this have to be very importantly judged without this proper analysis of horoscope and proper analysis of dashantar dasha is not complete right that's the first and foremost thing you say these houses are having malefics but the seventh house is having benefic in this scenario also because as i told you these houses are very important if these houses are having malefics then marital life will be bad despite the fact that seventh house may have benefics on the other hand if these houses are having benefics but 7th house are having malefics then in that scenario you will see despite having malefics in 7th house the marital life of the native will be good at least satisfactory so these houses are more important right this is a thumb rule that you should remember here also one thing you should keep in mind that any benefic planet if it is combust debilitated is into weak condition then the planet will not be able to produce its result right so that should be kept in mind and malefic planet also when they are exalted when they are in own rashi 
when they are vargottam malefic planets also don't produce bad results so in these exceptional cases the malefics can also be good result giving right this is tip number 1 tip number 2 when you are analyzing a particular house you should see it see the house analyze the particular house with respect to kendras kendras you should understand kendra is 1 4 7 10 houses from any particular house these are the kendras and kendras are mutually supporting houses this is a great house related secret if you see we all know that lagna or the ascendant decides the complexion nature behavior character of the native but we seldom understand the true meaning of sages or we seldom understand what they are really trying to say the principle is that if there is any powerful so generally it is told that lagna indicates nature behavior character look appearance of the native this is told in general chapter then when you come to principles it will be told that if there is any powerful planet in kendra the that planet will give his nature behavior character appearance etc to the native this is the particular reason if you are aware of the astrological yogas you will know that in panch mahapurush yoga some physical traits etc of the native is also told a particular type of physical trait is possessed by the native of shash yoga rochak yoga ans yoga badra yoga malavi yoga etc now this is once again a testimony to the fact as you may already know that panch mahapurush yog is formed when venus jupiter mercury sun sorry saturn and mars are in kendras in either their own sign or in their exaltation sign now as i have already told you that though lagna indicates the nature behavior character appearance etc of the native but kendras have mutual influence over each other so the principle goes that any powerful planet in kendra will give its own appearance to the native despite the fact that lagna is having any planet or not if 7th house 4th house or 10th house is having a stronger planet stronger as compared to the planet which is situated in lagna in that particular scenario between two planets the result of the stronger should happen and because the planet in kendra is more powerful than the planet in the ascendant the nature behavior character of the planet in kendra will be there rather than the nature behavior character appearance of the planet in the lagna ascendant right Th that's a very basic fundamental principle that you have to understand first point first now keeping this in mind this should be your way of analysis with respect to any house right for example we have been taking the 7th house as an example now if kendras are having a strong benefic right because seventh house is not only influenced by the planet only only by the planet which is situated in the seventh house or only by the planet which is situated in the ascendant certainly planet situated in the ascendant will be affecting the seventh house but the planet in fourth house and the planet in tenth house is also influencing so when you will learn astrology deeper you will see that a powerful benefic in fourth house or 10th house is also told to give good marriage right so what you should essentially do is you should check the four kendras with respect to any house there will be three set of kendras right first will be 1 4 7 10 houses second will be 2 5 8 11 houses mutual kendras to each other they are and third will be 3 6 9 12 houses right they are mutual kendras to each other dividing a horoscope in this three setup you should see the most powerful planet in that area and predict the result accordingly so let's understand this kendras one by one the first set of kendra the 1 4 7 10 houses first house indicates name fame status success authority fourth house indicates enjoyment happiness land property vehicle Seventh house indicates marriage popularity. Tenth house also indicates name, fame, status, success, authority. These houses indicate. Now you have to check all the four houses. If there is a powerful planet in any of these houses, whatever is signified by these kendras, these things will be there in plenty, right? 
so a person having a strong planet in 1 4 7 10 houses any of that either one house or more than one house that that depends right both is okay so any person having a powerful strong planet whether it is benefic or malefic i will differentiate it later whether benefic or malefic having a strong planet in 1 4 7 10 houses name fame status authority happiness enjoyment properties vehicle good marriage will be there basically means to say a powerful planet is situated in one kendra the result of all the four kendras are good right this is something that you have to keep in mind now certainly different kendra lords can be into different situation which will still impact the judgment but you say the 10th lord is bad in this particular case a planet is have a person is having a very powerful planet in the fourth house or a very powerful planet in the ascendant whereas the 10th lord is going into a bad situation 10th lord is combust or 10th lord is debilitated now generally if the 10th lord is combust or debilitated professional life you will say is very bad but in this particular case because lagna is having a powerful planet the professional life of the native will not be very bad so because 10th lord is debilitated or combust is into a bad situation there will be struggles and difficulties in professional life that will be there but because there is a powerful planet in the ascendant success name fame prestige will be there also this way there have to be a synchronization in the analysis and you cannot ignore this mutual dependence of kendras while analyzing any house is something that you have to keep in mind now with respect to benefics and malefics one thing have to be understood if there is a powerful benefic in kendra it gives quick easy success to the native if there is a powerful malefic in the kendra then malefics can make you wait sometimes and initially there is struggle so ultimately success comes there but there is a lot of struggle and waiting if the powerful planet is malefic natural malefic if the powerful planet is natural benefic then in that particular scenario waiting is not there struggle is not there and 80% of the time the person gets power authority land property vehicle whatever x y z through inheritance also through others in the family also so that native have to do less effort and they get more result that that's the thing now in any particular horoscope which is having no planet in kendra or is having only weak planets in kendra 1 4 7 10 houses now keeping this particular principle in mind you can quickly tell to the native or you can quickly make a prediction that the native will not have a very good life his life will be full of struggles his life will be full of difficulties understanding this principle this can be very easily told right and this should be done as i told you this can never be ignored when i was you know when i was very very much active into social media and was active into different different groups people generally used to ask questions that can we differentiate between the horoscope of a rich popular and a rich person can we differentiate can we tell from the horoscope of a 5 year old child how successful he will become or not such questions i saw people asking everywhere they thought that the answer of this will be some rocket science technique that is not there this simple technique is the answer if there is a powerful planet in kendra person will be successful because the result of all the four kendras will be good if there is no planet in the kendra then the life will be very mediocre and if there is weak planet in kendra in that particular scenario life will be difficult full of struggles that should be understood easily that should be understood very clearly without any second thought without any doubt now 1 4 7 10 houses the primary kendras because all of them are beneficial or all of them are good to understand this is simple and easy the difficulty part comes into the other two set of kendras so the first kendra no 1 4 7 10 these are the essentials of life a strong benefic planet is there the essentials of life and you know, a property vehicle happiness name fame status success wife marriage the essentials of life are well fulfilled the second set of kendra second house fifth house eighth house eleventh house this second set of kendras primarily deal with money right this second set of kendra is money affluence prosperity right when there is a strong planet in any of these houses one is going to be affluent one is going to be prosperous 
one will going to be intelligent this second set of kendra talks about money prosperity affluence and intelligence also awards accolades and owners so when there is a strong planet in these houses second fifth eighth eleventh these things are going to be there if there is a strong benefic then these things will be easily achieved if there is strong malefic then with difficulty and patience this thing will be achieved but it will be achieved for sure there is no two thought into it no strong planet in these houses or no planet in these houses does indicate that in the matter of money and intelligence and a name fame prestige owner prosperity and affluence in these matters the person will struggle right now there is one thing that have one more thing that have to be understood with respect to this house you see second 11th and 5th house are directly connected to wealth so of course if there is a powerful planet in these three houses it makes the person very very wealthy but if there is a powerful planet in 8th house in that particular scenario though powerful planet in the 8th house will positively influence the second 5th and 11th house also but because it is necessarily because it is situated in the 8th house which is not a very good house despite giving money affluence prosperity intelligence and awards accolades and honors but because this planet is situated in 8th house and it is powerful a powerful planet in 8th house makes the 8th house powerful also will make the significations of 8th house powerful also and because of this particular reason there will be lot of ups and downs in life lot of sudden happenings in life these things will also be there right so with this second set of kendra you have to understand that three houses are beneficial but one house is not and to have a strong powerful planet is better to have a strong powerful planet is in this 2 5 11 house as compared to the 8 house though the result will be same right a strong powerful planet is situated in uh, second fifth eighth or 11th any of the house the result is the same person have money affluence prosperity intelligence award accolades and honor that the native is having right but if the planet is in eighth house then lots of ups and downs unexpected events unexpected loss of money instability these things will also come is something that you have to understand right now the next set of kendra is third sixth ninth and 12th house now you see in this particular case no ninth house is a beneficial house but third sixth 12th house is not a very beneficial house now you see ninth house is luck ninth house is guru ninth house is higher education and the purpose ninth house is dt also and the main theme of the ninth house is this higher education this guru this dt this luck will save you from misfortune so this particular third set of kendra 3 6 9 12 is related to how much the person can save itself save himself from misfortune how much stability will be there in life how strong luck etc will be there now you see if there is a strong planet in third sixth and 12th house it is not good why it is not good though there is a strong planet in these three houses but because these houses are negative right if the planet is situated in the third house the negative will be there have to be a lot of efforts and person have to take a lot of risk if this planet is situated is if this strong planet is situated in the sixth house then there will be lot of enmity diseases and competition if this strong planet is situated in the 12th house then there will be a lot of losses and expenditure also the good point is that because in this set of kendra this is called apoklim right in this apoklim houses in this apoklim kendra set ninth house is good house so a powerful planet in any of these four houses makes the person lucky makes the person have a guru make the person belong to a tradition give higher knowledge to the person and give good context to the person right though it gives but if the strong planet in third sixth and 12th house these difficulties will be there so in a nutshell you can also say that if there is a strong planet in third sixth and 12th house because ninth house is also inter internally connected to these houses a strong planet in third sixth and 12th house will also impact the luck and because it is a strong planet it will make the person lucky 
But of course, these obvious issues that I have told you will give. The best setup is to have a strong planet in 9th house. Now, because there will be a strong planet in the 9th house, luck, support of guru, good contacts, help from deity and gods, etc. These things will be there. And because there is a strong, powerful planet in the 9th house, it will positively impact the 3rd house, 6th house and 12th house also. Significantly reducing the hard work of the native. That means native will do little hard work and it will get good result. Significantly reducing the risk factor in life. That means the native will not have to take a lot of risk because many, th many things will be easily available to him. There will not be much competition. There will not be much diseases. There will not be much struggles. And the person will not lose many things in life and the expenditure will also be also will be under control. There will be no, there never there will be too much expenditure which will be problematic to the native. Right. So this is how it should be understood. And the basic point is that a planet in Kendra, right? Either it is in Kendra or it is in Panfar or it is in Apoklim, it affects the other houses also, more or less. If there is no planet in a house, then the analysis completely depends on other planets situated in Kendra to that house. In fact, if even if there is a planet in the house, then still other planets situated in Kendra to that house significantly change the result of that house under question or the house that you are analyzing. This is not only true for house, but it is true for planets also. What I have told you, Kendra is support, the basic support. So if you have to see what, which people will support or what things will support you into anything, you should check the Kendras. For example, who will support in marriage? If this is the question. If the question is who will support into marriage, right? Then marriage, how we will analyze marriage? We will analyze marriage with respect to the Venus or seventh Lord, whatever you take. Now Kendra to Venus is Ketu. Ketu indicates maternal grandparents. They will support the marriage. Rahu is also there. Rahu indicates paternal grandparents. They will also support. Jupiter indicates teacher, guru and preceptors. They will also support marriage. Jupiter is the third house lord, so siblings will also support in marriage and Jupiter is in 12th house lord, foreign contacts, foreign relationships will also support the marriage of the native. These will be the supports of the native. Supports, th these people will support the native in their, in his decisions related to marriage, will support the native and his life partner. The same type of analysis can be done with respect to the seventh lord also. Basic point is Kendra is mutual support. And whenever you have to analyze the result with respect to planet, the first point is which people or which things support you in your endeavor. For example, here we have taken Venus for marriage. Check the Kendras of Venus and that will tell you, that check the Kendras of Venus or seventh lot that will tell you who supports you in your marriage. That's the first point. More important than Venus will be the seventh lord, right? In traditional Vedic astrology, we give more importance to the house lord as compared to the significator is a thumb rule that you have to remember. First point. Second point, as I told you, that result also primarily depends on Kendras. Result is also dependent on Kendra. Now, if you want to support, you say profession. If you want to check about profession, you will check about the 10th Lord. That is Venus also. Right. Now, because this Venus is having Ketu in Kendra to it, and Ketu indicates a separation, and Kendra is important for analysis, Kendra have a I say in the analysis of a house. Now, because in Kendra to the 10th Lord is Ketu, this person will have to unexpectedly leave some jobs also. 
leave some professions also because of ketu because ketu is in kendra to the 10th lord the result of ketu will come into professions and multiple times this person will leave a job without any intimation because rahu is also in kendra to venus and what i am doing i am you have to see the relationship if the planet in kendra is friendly to the planet you are analyzing for example here we are analyzing venus and i am not taking ketu as very friendly to venus i take rahu as friendly to venus not ketu so regarding ketu i am telling bad result because ketu is not friendly to venus rahu i will take as friendly to venus and i will say good result for rahu that because rahu is also in kendra to venus the person will show good intelligence that rahu indicates in profession the cleverness of the native or the street smart nature of the native will help the native score good points or perform well in his profession in the same manner other significations of rahu can also be taken the friends from another religion will also be greatly beneficial in the professional life of the native so suppose this person is looking for a job he is employed since long now because rahu is in kendra to venus and rahu is supportive he can tell his friends of another religion to find a job for him or suggest him something and that will be very very beneficial now jupiter don't share a very good relationship with venus so i will say bad result that ethics morals these things can be problematic in profession for this native which the native should be careful about and he should make sure that ethics and morals does not come into his way does not hinder his professional success right so two things are there people signified by the planets in kendra so the house lorder significator are basically the supporters and other things indicated by the planet natural signification of the planet in kendra to another planet or another house depending on whether they are friendly or not friendly or inimical does indicate the good and the bad factor of analysis now there is one difference when you are analyzing a house every planet is support if you are analyzing kendras from the seventh house every planet is support provided the fact planet is powerful or the planet is problem if the planet is weak this is with respect to house analysis when you are analyzing with respect to planet then friendly planet is support and inimical planet is challenge this is something that you have to understand okay one more thing is there with respect to the see seventh house with respect to the seventh house ketu maternal grandparents will be supportive right now with respect to the seventh lord moon you see mars is there in kendra and mars and moon though they are friendly does not share a very good relationship so siblings will be problematic now if you remember i have already told that because kendra to the 7th house is jupiter also and jupiter is third lord siblings will be supportive but because in kendra to moon there is mars which makes the siblings as problematic so you should say that few siblings will be supportive and few siblings will be problematic in this also jupiter is in male rashi and mars is in female rashi so you should say in siblings female siblings will be problematic signified by mars female sibling is problematic in marriage 
and male sibling is supportive in marriage. This way you have to do proper analysis before you tell the result. In the same manner, there is importance of Kendra, 159 houses also. As you must have remember what I told you in starting also that fourth house, twelfth house, fifth house and ninth house essentially decides the result of any house or any planet when you are sitting to analyze them. These houses also you will analyze, right? That is very certain. Now coming to 159 house, this is the nexus of time. Right. The first house is the house that you are analyzing or the placement of the planet that you are analyzing, whether you are analyzing that planet or a, as a significator or as a house lord that depends on you. As you may know, I prefer house lord more as compared to significator. Now this fifth and ninth is the future. For example, once you get married, suppose you are taking the seventh law. Once you get married, what will happen next? To check that you have to analyze the five and nine house. This is the future. Fifth house is immediate future. Ninth house is long future. You say fifth to the Venus or seventh Lord is a weak planet. So just after marriage, there will be weakness. Now, depending on the planet, it can be physical weakness that can be disease or it can be professional weakness, societal weakness, financial weakness, whatever X, Y, Z. If there is a strong planet in fifth house, then there will be strength just after marriage. Now it can be bodily strength. It can be financial strength. It can be social strength, whatever X, Y, Z. So five, nine houses indicate the future of anything. Once the result is activated, what is indicated in near future and what you can expect in further future. For example, you say after marriage, the marriage will go for next 50, 60 years, right? That also you can see through the horoscope. You can quickly analyze how long the marriage will sustain. So you see after the marriage, the person will enjoy marital life for 60 years. Now the result that will happen for 30 years will come from the fifth house from Venus or seventh Lord. And the result in the last 30 years of marriage will come from ninth house of Venus or seventh Lord. This way you should analyze the future. The future of the relationship. The future is also analyzed with respect to second house. Right? So second house, fifth house and ninth house indicate what is going to happen in future. Right? But the difference between fifth and ninth future and the second future are two different things. For example, you are analyzing marriage. Second from the seventh Lord indicate after marriage, what will be change in your personal life, not induced by the life partner. Whereas fifth house and ninth house will indicate the changes in future that will be in your life induced by the life partner, right? So these two things are there. For example, continuing with the same thing, you are analyzing the seventh Lord moon. Second to it is Rahu Venus. Sorry, Rahu Jupiter. This is a combination for super intelligence. I will say. Because Rahu also indicate intelligence. Jupiter also indicates intelligence. It is a combination for super intelligence and making your own path. Right? You cannot go with what is already there, you will find your own new path. These two things will happen immediately in life after marriage. Because marriage or any event will induce a type of change in thinking, mentality, situations. And because of these changes, these two things will immediately happen. The native will have good intelligence and native will make his own path. So because the native will make his own path, a great change such as leaving the, uh, leaving the home of parents and living separately or leaving the job and starting a new venture, starting self-employment is the next thing that you can expect. And this is all from the native. This is because of native's mind. This is all the native's thinking induced by the changes in situation, mentality and thinking that the event of marriage will cause.
right? In the same manner, it can be expanded to other planets also. Now the changes that is happening because of spouse should seen with respect to fifth house and ninth house. Fifth from moon is Venus. This Venus is in the seventh house. So because of wife, Venus in the seventh house indicates lots of sensuality or sexuality. So because of spouse, there will be a lot of engagement in sensuality and sexuality, point one. The person will be fond of luxuries. The person will be fond of enjoyments. Because of life partner quickly after marriage or you can say life partner will help achieve these things because it is a benefit planet. I am telling help achieve these things or this will be good result. If it was a malefic planet, I will say bad result. Here the result is segregated based on malefics or benefits. Remember in trines, benefics are good, malefics are not. Right? This is a very basic principle. All those who have learned from me know this principle very well, but because not every one of you may know it. I am repeating it again, right? That's that, that is taking, yeah. So a lot of sensuality, attachment to luxuries, seeking enjoyments. This is the native will start doing, right? Just after marriage. And this will be induced. This approach will be there somehow because of life partner also. Now here, because it is a Venus and it is a beneficial planet, you, I will say that because life partner will also be earning or because life partner will come from a rich family or because life partner will already have things in his or her possession, which will support luxury enjoyment and sensuality to the native, he will engage into it. So this change is induced by life partner. Now the far future of marriage is seen with respect to ninth house and there is no planet there. So you have to take Scorpio, the Rashi only, right? And because Scorpio is secretive, right? And because Scorpio is thinking, because Scorpio indicates diseases also, you said after 30 years of marriage, the person will become very secretive. The person will become intellectual, will have a habit of thinking and will be troubled by diseases or ailments. Right? So near future of marriage and the far future of marriage will be fifth house and ninth house from the seventh lord. And in the same manner, it can be taken from any plan. Right? Fifth house and ninth house from the 10th Lord. For example, you said 10th Lord is Venus here and 9th from Venus is Moon. Moon indicates fluctuation. You said the person remains professionally active from the age of 25 up to the age of 75. How many years are these? These are 55 years. If you make half of it, it will be 20. 25 will be half and 26, 27, 27 and a half year it will be, right? So 25 years to the next 27 and a half years. That means 25 years to next 25 years to 52.35, 52 years of age will be the result of fifth from 10th Lord Venus and from the age of 52 to the age of 75, there will be result of ninth from Venus. Now, because ninth from Venus is moon, which indicates fluctuation to this person, I can very easily predict. See fifth from Venus is Scorpio. That is a fixed Rashi. I can easily say that from the age of 25 up to the age of 52, his professional life will be very much fixed. The person will be in only one job. They will not be changing their profession very often. Whereas after from the age of 52 to 75, there will be a lot of fluctuations, ups and downs and many changes in the professional life. This I can very easily predict. And those of you who don't practice astrology will take some time to realize the 
importance of this technique but this technique is very very useful very very powerful predicting that after this because see these results are those results which cannot be changed by dasha antar dasha or anything for that matter x y z right this is the part of analysis now because in this horoscope after the age of 52 because there is a lot of fluctuations and ups and downs in professional life no matter what type of dasha is going on this result will be there and this prediction is a very big prediction which i can tell you with confidence that it 90% of the astrologers in this world cannot make and because they cannot make such predictions they can they don't know this type of analysis they are not good they are bad astrologers because such things they cannot do always depending on dasha antar dasha is very self determinantal such techniques you should know such techniques you should use only then your astrological practice will have complete fulfillment right because in this particular case you know after the age of 52 till whatever long time the person will be active no matter which the shantar dasha is coming it is rajyog or not whatever x y z there will be fluctuations and ups and downs in professional life that is without any doubt any the shantar dasha is running does not matter so our best advice to this native will be that by the age of 55 it is better to take retirement or at least have a lot of savings with yourself so that these fluctuations does not impact you much and if possible between the age of 50 to 55 you will have very strong feeling of changing your job or changing your professions to start a new venture and all of these things this you should avoid otherwise a lot of fluctuations and instability will be there the importance of this technique and how it helps in prediction is immense very much this you should understand the more you think over it the more greatness of it you will realize mai kya tareef karu because it is a very great technique that you should have at your fingertips i am telling you these things the greatness making such prediction is very very difficult the last part is 12th house 12th house is past take marriage what is stopping you from marriage if there is an obstruction in marriage who is causing that obstruction 12th from moon is saturn the job profile of the native can be the obstruction saturn is the lagna lord the nature behavior character mentality of the person will be the obstruction saturn is the second house lord the family of the native will be obstruction in getting married this obstruction should be realized and removed for example 12th from venus there is no planet but the sign is gemini what is stopping professional greatness what is stopping professional success gemini is stopping it because gemini is a dual sign in decisiveness because gemini is indicating affairs at workplace because gemini is there it is ruled by mercury and mercury indicates speech argument speech and communication are those things which will stop and hinder the professional growth because they are in 12th from the 10th lord so 12th is past 12th is mistake 12th is what is stopping you from either greatness or success or the manifestation of result see because the 10th lord is in kendra to 10th house it will support the 10th house back getting job will not be a problem that you know now because second from the 10th lord is sun and mercury the immediate future of the profession is not going to be good because sun is a malefic and guli is also there and because the immediate future is not good i will here interpret 12th house as what is stopping you from greatness 
right? So what will the 12th house signify of these three that depends also on the factors of analysis. And this is my tip. If you ask me what I have learned in my 12 years of astrological practice, I will tell you that I have learned that the signification that you should pick up for prediction is not always same or definite. The signification that you should pick up for prediction will keep on changing depending on the situation. Here, because the 10th Lord is in Kendra to 10th house, I am interpreting 12th house as what is stopping you from greatness. On the other hand, if this 10th Lord Venus was into 6, 8, 12 house, bad placement, or if it was combust, or if it was in planetary war, in that situation, getting a job will be difficult because it is a difficult scenario. Then, in that case, I will take 12th house as what is stopping you from getting the result, what is stopping you from getting the job, what is stopping you from getting a stable career. So whether I will take 12th house as what is stopping you from greatness or I will take 12th house as what is, what is stopping you from success or I will take 12th house as what is stopping you from uh, take, uh, NL, uh, uh, to enjoy the result. That depends on other factors that I have already told you. And this is my golden tip to you that the signification that you have to pick up for a particular house depends on multiple factors. And there is no standard signification, which can be always picked up blindly. If you do this, you will be doing a great mistake in your practice. And this way you can never achieve the prediction proficiency like a professional, right? Now, this thing that I have taught you, there are many such formulas which can be taught, which are very, very, very essential in analysis, but either is not known by people, not known by people only because once you know it and you use it, ignoring it is no chance because of the value it adds in prediction. But the reality is many people don't know about such principles. In fact, what I have found that people know about astrology, but they don't know about astrology, which significations to put, how the planet works, what is the work of signification, how the significations gets modified, what are the basic principles of house analysis. These things people don't know properly, and this is what stops them from practicing good astrology. Keeping this in mind, since last, I think, one and a half, two years, I have been doing mastering series in which Right now, I am doing mastering the birth chart. One class I have done last Sunday and the classes, there are 15 classes if I'm not wrong. Right. The course talks about the significations of planets, the significations of Rashis and the signification of yogas, how to use the uh, principles related to Rashis, planets and yogas to make predictions. This complete thing that you have understood. This complete thing is elaboration of, as I have referred to you in the starting, the importance of Kendra, we understand when you look, when we look closely at Panch Mahapurush Yogas, right? In the same manner, these houses are important. This is the way these houses works into prediction. How do we know that? Sages have not explicitly mentioned that, but hinted at these principles by mention of different type of yogas. That unfortunately, nowadays, the astrologers only remember these yogas, but don't try to understand it. Remembering the yoga is a futile exercise. There is no horoscope where the result of Gajkeshri yoga ditto matches. Even if it is matches in 10, 15 horoscopes, it cannot be told as a working formula because the Gajkeshri yoga is not to be remembered and applied as it is, but it is to be understood. The principle of Gajkeshri yoga is moon and uh, Jupiter will support each other which I have expanded into Kendras are supporters to each other. And I have presented to you this technique in the same manner, each and every yoga have to be understood in detail rather than just remembering it. If you just, if you are just remembering yoga and applying it, you are an average student, not an intelligent student, right? In such a manner, first of all, you should understand how to choose the significations, when to modify the signification, when to pick up which signification which comprises the first two parts of the course, the planet part and the Rashi part. 
and lastly in the yoga part we will be learning a lot of principles of astro a lot of principles that we derive through astrological yogas which help us in our predictions so if you want to master predictions master the analysis of horoscope and if you want to predict like a professional whether you will practice like a professional or not that completely depends on you but at least you should have the ability to predict and analyze like a profession and if you want to achieve that mastering the birth chart is a course that i am doing right now that you should join and this is a course absolutely for beginners if you want to start learning with me and want to become good astrologer want to want to you know learn how to do good predictions accurate predictions then start with mastering the birth chart course which is very suitable for beginners also and your success is certain in astrology right thank you for watching the video